Hey friends, I'm Hope and welcome, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite women in fiction. Since this is Women's History Month, I did want to talk about this. I've seen some other people do a similar video and I was really inspired by them. In particular, I think Mel from Mel Reads, I really enjoyed her version of this. So it got me thinking about some of the women that I most enjoyed reading about and so I am here to share some of those with you. And I have organized this a little bit into kind of a groups of books that are, I've done based on kind of similar reasons that I like the women in these books. So it doesn't make any sense. Let's just, let's just jump in. I'll explain as I go along. So this first group of women is women that I think are really fun to read about in part because they're very defiant. They're very sassy. They kind of take no shit from other people and they each have their own strengths that allow them to navigate the world kind of on their own terms and I really love that about them. So the first one I think is kind of a no-brainer is Lizzie Bennet from Pride and Prejudice. I just love the way that she insists upon choosing how she wants her life to be. She is kind of got these social pressures from the time and also obviously the financial pressures for her family to marry well, but she's not willing to marry someone just for their money or just to appease her family. She very much is adamant about marrying somebody that she loves and I think that that was uh, part of why I love this book so much. Another really great kind of defiant character that I love and this was a hard choice because this is the Goblin Emperor and there are a ton of really interesting women in this book because the Goblin Emperor has a world that is very patriarchal. The men kind of own the women in a sense. They uh, are able to use women as um, basically items to trade to gain social capital. And so there's a lot of really interesting women in this. They have very different approaches to how they deal with being in this situation, with how they deal with the power structures in this world. But one of my absolute favorites is Xthero. I can't think of her last name right now, but I just love her because she is so kind of similar to Lizzie Bennet. She's kind of not willing to take any shit from anybody. And unlike Lizzie Bennet, she doesn't have quite the same leeway to decide her own fate. So she is engaged to somebody in this book, but she she does get to decide how she behaves towards her fiance and how she's willing to engage in his world. And so I think that that is a really interesting element of this. And like I said, there's a lot of women that are finding different ways to deal with power structures here. But I think that Kasthero is really a interesting um, version of that. I love her a lot. Also, if you haven't read this, just read it. It's really good. There's so much to talk about in that book. It's going to come up a lot from now on, basically. And next up I have Cersei from Cersei by Madeline Miller. And I love Cersei because she is very defiant. She's treated poorly when she's growing up by her father and her other family members because she's not like them. But she is very strong-willed and I love that she's also very flawed. That she's not necessarily always a good person, but she always lives life on her own terms and you always understand her reasons for the things that she does. And so I think that that is just a really fun dynamic to read about. I love how strong-willed Cersei is and again she's not this perfect person. She's not even necessarily a good person all the time but that you totally understand where she's coming from and I find it very easy to root for her regardless of whether she's a good person or not because I root for her ability to live her life the way that she wants to live it. And then last in this category I have for from the Akatar series. There's a lot of women here I could talk about, but my favorite is Alice. She is a side character. If you haven't read Akatar, Alice is a minor side character, but she is one of the women working in the Spring Court and she becomes friends with Feyre and I just love Alice because she gives Feyre great advice. She doesn't let Feyre take shit. Like she, Alice not only is like very strong-willed and very protective of her nephews, she also it kind of guides Feyre to behave similarly or guides Feyre to not allow the men or the males in the court to kind of walk all over her. And so I really enjoyed Alice and her dynamic with Feyre. I love her a lot. 
The next couple of books are all books that have women that I think have really interesting journeys of growth. I really enjoyed watching them kind of become the people that they wanted to be, that they were intended to be, and so it's just really, um, and it's fun to watch that dynamic of their growth across the book. So the first one I have is Cassiopeia Tun from Gods of Jade and Shadow, which is a very shiny book, and she's very like a lot of those that first set of women she's very strong-willed but she's also in a situation at the beginning where she really doesn't get to make a lot of choices for herself she's very much in a position of having to serve her family and she really hates it but as the story progresses she grows into this very independent and confident woman who has learned to value her own skills and her own decisions and also she treats other people with just this really compelling, I think, like, earnestness and honesty and warmth, because that's ultimately how she treats even Hunkame, who is a death god that she's interacting with in this book. She treats him as being very much just another person, and that's one of her strengths throughout this book, and I just love the way that she grows into those strengths. Next up is Mary from Mother Tongue. This is a book about Mary, who is I want to say like 18 or 19 at the beginning of this book. She's an older teenager, but she's feeling very lost. She's living with her aunt in Arizona, I think, and she doesn't really know what she wants in life or who she wants to be, but her aunt takes in a refugee coming from, I think it's El Salvador? Yes, he's coming from El Salvador. His name is Jose, and he stays with them for a time as he is preparing his documents to try and go to Canada to seek asylum um, because he's running from the uh, civil war in El, Sal in El Salvador. And so this is a book that is entirely about Mary and her growth from being kind of lost to kind of getting back in touch with her, her roots and her family history while also forming a new sense of the person that she wants to be and I really enjoyed Mary's story. This book does contain content warnings for child abuse and rape, but those are both uh, mostly implied, I believe, if I remember correctly, and it's um, off-page. It's, it's referred to, but it's not on-page violence. But if, if you can read this without um, being harmed by it, if, if this isn't something that's going to uh, hurt you mentally to read it. I do really recommend this book. The writing is beautiful. It's very lyrical and like I said I really love Mary's journey throughout this book. Last book for this category is A Room of the View with Lucy Honeychurch. She is just this like ray of sunshine that comes into this book and very much like illuminates everybody else around her. I love her so much. She's just very sweet and very warm and at the beginning of this book she's very much uh, subject to social pressure similar to Lizzie Bennet but she doesn't have the kind of confidence and sass that Lizzie Bennet has so she just kind of goes along with what her parents think she should do in life and one of the recurring themes is people talking about if Lucy took the different parts of her personality and really like let herself be whole as a person rather than having these kind of compartmentalized pieces of herself. They think that she could do some really great things and that she would be just this really strong woman. And so that is her journey, is kind of going from this point where she's very innocent, she's very willing to go along with what people want her to do, to going, no, this is what I want for my life. I don't care what you think or what the consequences will be for me socially, I just want this. And I really enjoyed reading her journey, especially because she is such like a warm, sweet character. I have to move because my legs are killing me. I don't have a chair, so we're just gonna get lower. Hello. <laughs> so the next set of characters that I have, uh, the penultimate set, are characters that I enjoy because they're very um, able to navigate difficult situations. They think very quickly and they're just extremely competent in really interesting ways. So first up, is Noemi from Mexican Gothic who ends up in this very strange situation when she goes to rescue her cousin who's recently married a wealthy British man and so she goes to see what's up what's happening with her cousin and ends up in what is objectively a very horrifying situation because the family is super creepy 
the patriarch is really into eugenics and she is just fiercely protective of her cousin. She is really graceful in the way that she deals with the different members of the family. She's kind when she needs to be. She puts her foot down when she needs to. And I just really enjoyed how competent Noemi is in this book and how much she takes charge in protecting herself and her cousin. Next up is Dinner Across Guns in The Only Gun Idians. She is my favorite character in this book. She is, I think, I want to say like 16-ish. She's a teenager and she is just she's this book is quite short so she's only in this book for a little while but the things that she does here just highlight how intelligent she is and how quick thinking she is she's able to help herself and some another character um because she's just very adaptable and she's got so much perseverance and i just love that about her and ultimately her compassion and the the kindness in her is really important too so i really like that dinner's strengths come from both her ability to think fast but also her compassion and just that side of her i think that that is really well done in this book Look at my list. Next up I've got Mahit and Three Seagrass from a memory called Empire by Arcady Martin. Mahit is the main character, she's an ambassador, and, Ma and Three Seagrass is her uh, aide that's assigned to her when she arrives at the capital of this empire, of Tixkalan. And they're both extremely competent in very different ways because Mahit is really good with people, she's good at kind of pol navigating difficult political situations and kind of talking her way out of things, whereas Three Seagrass is just like extremely efficient and very no-nonsense but she also has this really fun subtle sense of humor that comes through in her work sometimes too and the dynamic between them is like together they there's nothing that can stop them because they just have such a um compatible skill set so i really enjoyed both the characters individually and the way they work together throughout the book Next up is another book that has multiple characters I love. I couldn't pick one. Um, this is actually the second book in a series. This is Die and Stay Dead by Nicholas Kaufman. This is the sequel to Dying is My Business, which follows a man named Trent who wakes up one day and one, he can't die, and two, he has no idea who he is or where he came from. So that's the focus of the story, but there's these three women that he interacts with at various points that I absolutely love. So there's Bethany and Gabriella who are members of the friendship group that Trent ultimately gets pulled into, and then there's Ingrid who is an older kind of motherly figure, and I love all of them because they have extremely different strengths, but they're all very competent and just... Trent is too dumb to live and he needs them because he, he would not survive without them. So Gabriella is really cool, she can read minds, I think she has a couple of other powers and she's also quite skilled in uh, physical hand-to-hand -hand combat. And so she's really badass and cool, but she's also really like caring and loves her friends very dearly. And is just like interesting because she's very warm but also very tough. And then there's Bethany who is extremely stubborn and she's very good with invention and crafting magical charms. So she can safely use magic. This is set in a world where magic is dangerous to use if you're like a mage and you're using magic um, without like a charm or some sort of object to help you because magic has become unbalanced in this world. So Bethany is very good at crafting charms and that's like her whole deal. My cat is very upset that he's not in here. And she's just really stubborn and I love that she's just like, <laughs> she she's just so tired of Trent all the time. But she also is like, well, I guess he's my problem now. And I think that that's great. And then Ingrid is a kind of motherly figure who shows up, who helps the team. Um, it's kind of main team in this book, um, in the series. But she's really cool because she's also very tough. She can definitely hold her own in a fight. But she's also very motherly. She's good at healing. She's very kind and she takes the team into her home. And I just love her to bits. So lots of great women in this series. Also, this is just a really good series. It's really fun. It's really fast-paced, and I think more people should read it. And then, very last, I have one more category, and there's only one book in this category, but it's Friendships, because I have the Women's Murder Club series, which is... 
it, it's a guilty pleasure series for me. Like, I, I would say objectively, the mysteries are fun. I like the mysteries in this. I think some of the women fall a little bit into different stereotypes, just a little bit. Um, and I am bothered with some of how they're described, particularly Claire. Um, there's Cindy, Claire, Jill, and Lindsay. Lindsay tends to be the kind of point of view character for a lot of it. Um, but all of the characters get point of view sections. But Claire in particular is plus size and there's a lot of emphasis on Claire's body weight, which I don't really care for. But on the whole, I love the dynamic between the women. So it's about these four women who all work in fields adjacent to criminal justice. Lindsay is a detective. Jill is a district attorney or assistant district attorney. Cindy is a reporter and Claire is a medical examiner and they're just all really really good at what they do. They're excellent at their jobs but they work together. They're friends and so they like come together to solve mysteries and solve cases and I just love the dynamic between them and I particularly love the sections where they're all getting together because you get this interesting mix of like here's the case, here's what we think, here's how we might proceed and they're like giving each other ideas on what they could do to um, push the case forward but they're also like supporting each other on personal stuff and they have all these like fun conversations about things that are going on in their lives and I just really enjoy that aspect too so but that is just a selection of women that I really like in books and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll check out some of these because I think they're all really good books and thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video so bye